I'm Richard Saxton with Market Talk from Orlando, Florida's Money Show, and my guest is John Vogel. He is the senior chairman of the Vanguard Mutual Fund Group out of Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, a mutual fund company who started in 1974, 1974. going going strong with uh, one of the largest mutual funds in the industry, your uh, S&P index fund. Yes, it is. It'll soon be, um, soon be the largest fund in the industry, S&P 500 index fund. And it strictly follows the S&P 500 index and changes whenever uh, new stocks are uh, deleted or added. Exactly so. It doesn't do anything but follow the index and it tracks it with great precision. We're very proud of it. Low expenses is kind of your claim to fame. Low expenses is where it is in the, in the business in which I find myself. People forget how much of an investment gets consumed by cost. Uh, the average, because of cost, the average mutual fund earns about 85% of the annual return in the stock market. The index fund earns 99%. And we can also tell you about tomorrow. Tomorrow the index fund will earn 99%. Uh, tomorrow we have no idea what the, the index fund will earn 99%. Earn the average fund, we don't know whether it be 85 or 80 or 90. Many uh, criticize mutual funds for getting too big. Is that really an issue when you have an index fund as large as yours? No, this industry has gotten huge. This industry owns 23% of all the stocks in America, and many funds are far too big to accomplish what they tell you they can c accomplish in their prospectuses and reports. An index fund, though, because it does no trading, just buys a little bit more stock every day uh, as the money comes in, uh, has a really an unlimited size. You have other mutual funds as well, so are you looking for more indexes, sector funds like Fidelity, for example? What is the direction of Vanguard? Uh, we pretty much think we're complete where we want to be. Uh, we might do something a little more on the tax-efficient side. We're the first people to bring out uh, tax-managed funds. Uh, but uh, you don't need an infinite number of funds. There, there are too darn many funds in this business. I mean, there's something like 8,000 mutual funds. I don't know what to do with 8,000 funds because in the long run, they're all average, less the amount of their cost. What about the tax funds you were talking about? How do you tax-manage a mutual fund? Uh, the way we do it is go off an index base uh, but we're very careful about, for example, the accounting in which we sell, take losses to offset gains, and we always have losses because money is coming in every day. And we're also very careful not to let speculative investors in the fund so your capital flows don't get disturbed by the way that uh, investors move money in and out. You can have a fund that wishes not to sell stocks, but if all the money goes out, it has to sell stocks. So we have redemption fees in those funds. And it may look like a lot to an investor, but it's the best thing that ever happened to him if he stays in the fund. The betas, uh, there are some index funds that uh, try to have a two beta versus a one beta. In other words, if the S&P goes up a point, uh, your fund will go up a point. Others might go up two to kind of accentuate the move in either direction. Yeah. What's your view on that? Uh, I, I don't believe in that, in that kind of leverage. Uh, a typical mutual fund will have a beta risk relative to the market of maybe of 120 to 80, something like that, or 140 to 70. Uh, but these funds that try and double it uh, or take it to zero, they're the, they're the ones that go short, uh, simply are, are speculating on knowledge about what the market's going to do, and nobody knows what the market's going to do. Least of all, I. <laughs> it's a no load fund with a very low expense, all your mutual funds. Uh, how do you notice the flow when the market starts fluctuating and taking 10 or 15 percent drops? Uh, well, we, we're very well. We, we seem to have explained what we do very well, and the funds are highly predictable market up, fund up, market down, fund down, the exact same amount in both cases. And that result was when these, this industry lost. Uh, uh, $16 billion worth of cash flow equity funds in the month of August, we took in $3 billion. So we're feeling pretty good about the investors we have and uh, the way people uh, like this, the, the uh, relative returns that, we're, that, we, that we offer them. Can you give us a market prediction? Uh, the answer is yes, but I won't. No, I, I think the market is rather high at the moment. Uh, the price earnings ratio is is at 28 times earnings. It began this great bull market 16 years ago at eight times earnings. If the price earnings ratio, this is an interesting point, if the price earnings ratio had remained at eight where it was at the beginning, the S&P would be at 350 today. It's actually at 1300. That's the difference between a swing in emotion from fear to greed. We should talk about your uh, your personal health. You're in terrific shape and uh, have gone through some interesting experiences yeah. health-wise. To say the least, uh, I received, as some of you may know, a uh, heart transplant, brand new heart, almost three years ago. I'll be three years old this uh, February 21st, and my wife will be glad to get me out of the terrible twos. <laughs> Terrific, and obviously you're doing very well, and uh, it worked well for you. Unbelievable. It's a second chance at life, and uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you again and again.
Let's talk a little bit about the uh, the management of the mutual fund group. Uh, tell us who's actively managing uh, the overall business as opposed to the mutual funds, which work off the indexes, don't need that active management, right? Yeah, my, my successor, John Brennan, is, is uh, the uh, CEO now at Vanguard. I turned that over to him about, uh, I guess, about three years ago, just before I went in the hospital for the transplant, and he seems to be doing a great job. So you said earlier that the mutual fund family is where you want it to be. Can you describe uh, which indexes you have covered and uh, why you think you've, you're kind of there right now? Sure. Let, let me just say that of our $450 billion, uh, about $150 billion is in index funds and about $100 million in very, very conservatively managed, high-quality uh, corporate, municipal, and money market funds. So the, the, the returns of all added, all those assets, 250 or 275 billion, is highly predictable relative to the markets they're in. We know just what they'll do if you tell me what the market will do. No mean accomplishment, but we know, the, we, we know they'll perform as we would expect. Um, our actively managed stock funds are now smaller than the index funds. Uh, they're about 90 billion, uh, and uh, they, they're coming along fine. We've had some problems and some good ones. But uh, basically, we like them to be quite predictable within their groups. We like to tell you we're trying for growth here or value here or small cap here. We actually have 28 index funds now. From we have growth index, value index, and that's a refinement than small cap indexes. But that's a refinement most people should not do. These are specialty funds for people that have gaps in their portfolio they'd like to fill. Speaking of which, a lot of people would like to have internet stocks, but do it through a mutual fund. I think you were talking about Charlie Munger, who I think now has uh, an internet fund. Uh, they're starting to crop up. NASDAQ has been really where the money is, yep. technology stocks. What's Vanguard doing in that regard? Uh, we are, have no plans for an internet fund. That, that would not be our style. I mean, it seems to, it's hard to guess the market, and it's certainly been uh, tremendously overheated. And uh, whether it's tulip mania all over again, we shall see. But uh, that kind of speculation is uh, something that no one knows how it will come out. But the problem with the mutual fund is not, that is not the exact problem with the fund. The problem with the mutual fund is after the stocks have gone way up, people put all their money in the mutual fund. And when the stocks go way down, they take it all out. So even if the fund wins in the long run, investors don't. They're too subject to market timing by investors. So they're not a good place for us to be doing business with good long-term investors. Some say that's the advantage of load funds because you think twice about shifting your money because you're going to have a penalty. Well, you know, I've heard that many, many times, but I should tell you what the fact is, and that is load turn, uh, funds have more turnover than investors, only a little bit more, but more than no-load funds do. They still turn them over. Maybe it's because the brokers help people to turn them over, but the no-load fund is subject to speculation. But uh, if, if you handle shareholders properly and don't give them too many privileges like swapping over the telephone, uh, all those wild things, sometimes you can put in redemption fees. You can keep redemption fees down if you want to. Redemption, redemption rates. The load funds, the high expense funds, where does that money go? Uh, <laughs> well, the, it, it goes to the people that manage the fund, essentially, the sponsors. The, to some degree, the people that sell them, but most, most of all to, uh, to the people that manage them. For example, this industry pays management fees, total, total fees all in, of about $55 billion a year. Do you know how much goes for the cost of managing those funds? Four billion dollars. Where is the other 51 billion gone? Well, that's a good question. Marketing, administration does cost something, and huge profits to the fund managers. What do they call you, Mr. Index? Because uh, you've got like the biggest S&P 500 index fund, and, and that is kind of a reputation that has followed you around? Well, they call me the father of indexing, and they also call me some things that aren't so nice, which I won't tell you over the air. <laughs> what are you going to tell us in your new book that's coming out soon? Uh, the new book is called Common Sense on Mutual Funds. It's a sort of a sequel, if you will, to Bogle on Mutual Funds, my first book, which continues to do very well. And I'm going to tell people uh, how to invest. I'm going to tell about investment strategy, investment choices, investment management, uh, what the chances are of beating the market in the long run. And then I'm going to tell them a little bit about why this fund industry is not a better place for people to invest, why it's so expensive, why the industry is focused too much on marketing and not enough on management and why it costs so much. I'm going to give them some remedies, how this industry ought to be structured to give the fund shareholder a fair shake, which is what I'm all about. Let's give the shareholder a fair shake. We certainly know that, and many people have called you uh, squeaky and, and so on. And, you know, obviously your shareholders appreciate it because of your low expense yeah. ratios. So how do you market? How do you get the biggest bang for the little buck that you charge your shareholder? Uh, well, it's pretty easy. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we didn't use this at the beginning, but we used it uh, ever since I saw the movie. If you build it, they will come. 
You don't have to promote it. It's build a better mousetrap, as, as uh, Emerson said, and the world will be the path to your door. We think we've got a pretty good mousetrap. It's certainly the lowest cost way to invest that there is. And if cost is important, which it is, uh, I think people are going to be the path to our door. Uh, hope so, but uh, we're getting awful big, and that sometimes worries an old guy like me, too. We're seeing a lot of M&A, mergers and acquisitions, deletions, additions to the index. Obviously, you have to uh, deal with that when a new stock comes in. Uh, Cost-wise, how do you deal with it? And, and obviously, the size of the transaction when you've got so much in the fund. Yeah. Well, the ideal is to do the transaction the same moment that it happens, to close the business the same day that it changes in the index. Uh, most people, well, I don't know how other people run their index funds, but we, we have our own strategies, proprietary strategies for dealing with that. We don't match it exactly. And uh, we've been able to actually make some extra bucks for our shareholders. So our funds, which have a cost of uh, 0.20, 20 basis points, as they say, have actually, we're all within about five basis points of the index last year, much better than you'd expect. So uh, we're very happy with, with adjusting to those changes. They help a little bit. Standard & Poor's give you a call and, and <laughs> give you an advance warning? Uh, we, we don't deal with inside information. They're very good about that, and we don't want it. Uh, no point in getting an unfair advantage in this world. All right, where does the market and the world go from here? We've had stellar returns, and you've mentioned 16 years of a bull market. Uh, I mean, do you get a handle on it being in the business? Uh, you get a handle on it, but the one thing you know is that uh, nobody knows where the market is going. Nobody. Uh, only the market knows. And uh, it's not a good idea to guess at that. You could be wrong. I've been wrong many times in the past. Uh, I sometimes guess, but I don't act. The main th the time is time is your friend when you invest, and impulse is your enemy. And if there are anything people ought to know, that's what it is. Don't act on impulse, but time do do its work. Give you compound interest over a long period of years, and you'll do fine as an investor. You quoted Warren Buffett. Uh, you believe in uh, decent low P.E. ratios and uh, kind of the market valuations that we don't see in the Internet? Well, I, uh, Warren Buffett is not basically a low P.E. man with uh, Coca-Cola and stocks like that. He's a, he's a value man, but in a different sense than he used to be. Uh, he likes the companies that have powerful global franchises, and he's going to do just fine. Uh, he's the most brilliant investor I've ever met. He does it with common sense, and he buys businesses and holds them. That's the trick. It's not trading pieces of paper, it's buying businesses. And the trick of the index fund is it buys every business in America in the right proportions. Let me ask you about internet trading and the fact the individual investor can now invest with ease and do transactions with ease. How is this going to change what you do in the entire investor climate? Well, it's going to change the climate and it's changed it already a lot, but it's not going to change what we do. Uh, I think all this trading finally to quote a line out of Shakespeare, the day trading in the market is a, a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing, although maybe signifying in the long run losses. Terrific. Great to see you. And I know we're going to see you in Los Angeles in May for the LA Times conference, and uh, we'd love to have you come on the channel. Well, I'll be back, and I'll see you then. All right. Terrific. John Bogle, who's the founder of the Vanguard Mutual Fund Group, the senior chairman of Vanguard, my guest on Market Talk from the Money Show in Orlando, Florida.